Hello, everyone. Jerry Savelle here. Thank you for joining me once again for Back to the Basics. I want to say thanks for watching and thank you for corresponding with us and letting us know how the, these lessons are blessing you and helping you and inspiring your faith. It's always good to hear from you, so please continue to communicate with us. And also, please let someone know about this special program. I know they'll be blessed as well. We're continuing to talk about developing an accurate prayer life. And today we're going to be talking about praying effectively where your financial needs are concerned. And once again, I want to reiterate this important principle. Always allow God's Word to be His part of your prayer life. And the reason being is because the Word of God is the will of God. If you want to know what God's will is, then this is where you go to find it, the Bible. It is a revelation of the will of God. And you see, if you take the time to read it and find out what it says about your particular need, then you know in advance that when you pray according to the Word of God, that He hears you, and you know if He hears you, you know you have the petitions you've desired of Him. Now, where did I find that? I found that in 1 John chapter 5. We've read it before, but I want to read it to you once again. So if you have your Bibles with you, join with me. And if you haven't highlighted or underlined this verse already, please do so, so that every time you pass by 1 John chapter 5, this is going to jump out at you, okay? Now, look at verse 14. And this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. Now, once again, it's important that we learn to pray according to His will. Don't just pray off the top of your head. Don't just pray what you've heard other people pray. It may not be in accordance to the will of God. Don't pray some religious prayer. It may not line up with the will of God. Learn to go to the Bible and find out what God's Word says about your specific need and then pray accordingly. So notice, we have this confidence in Him that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of Him. Now I want you to notice verse 14 and verse 15 both talk about knowing something. Knowing. I like knowing. I like knowing up front that I'm praying the perfect will of God. Because if I know that I'm praying the perfect will of God, then it goes on to say, I also know that I have this assurance that whatever I've asked Him, I have that petition granted to me. So if I want to know the will of God concerning financial breakthroughs, financial miracles, or financial needs in my life, where do I go? I go to the Bible to find out what the Bible says. So once again, the Bible is a revelation of the will of God. Now, with that in mind, let's go to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 12. And Jesus is talking about uh, some important things here that I want us to look at very closely. Notice, and I'm going I'm to take the time to read this in its entirety. In verse 22, Jesus speaking, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what you'll eat, neither for the body what you'll put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? So what is he saying? God considers you better than the fowls. And if He takes care of them, then why wouldn't He take care of you? That's the point that Jesus is endeavoring to make. And then it says, And which of you, uh, taking thought, can add one stu uh, stature, to, uh, one, let me read it again. And which of you, with taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not. And yet I say unto you that Solomon, all of his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothed the grass, which is today in the field, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? 
So notice here, Jesus is endeavoring to make the point that God knows exactly what you need. Not only that, God is interested in what you need. And not only that, God is willing to supply what you need. Notice if you keep reading in verse 29, and seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knoweth that you have need of these things. Now that's the important point. You know, a lot of people uh, think that prayer is trying to convince God that they have a need. No, it says very clearly here, Jesus speaking, God knows what you need. God is aware of every need in your life. He knows that you have need of food, clothing, and shelter. And then it says, but rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. In other words, I like to say it this way, put first things first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and then God promises that all these other things will be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So what I'm endeavoring to point out to you is this. Jesus is telling us that God is fully aware of every need that you and I will ever have. He knows what you need right now. He knows your smallest needs. He knows your largest needs. He knows the needs that uh, are trying to weigh you down. He knows the needs that are trying to create pressure on you. He knows the needs that, that Satan is telling you, you will never have those needs met. God knows every need. Nothing is hidden. Everything is open unto Him. So uh, keep in mind that when you go to the Father in prayer about your needs, you're not trying to convince Him that you have a need. Not only that, now listen to this, you're not trying to talk Him into meeting your needs. It says right here, the Father knoweth what you need. He says, now what you need to do is seek first the kingdom of God. Don't seek needs first. Seek first the kingdom of God. And if you will do this, then he promises that all these things that you need will be added to you. So that's important to know because that's important in building and developing an accurate prayer life. Don't spend all your time trying to convince God that you have a need. He knows you have a need. He knows exactly what you need. Now, once again, we've said time and time again in this study, make God's Word His part of your prayer life. Now, let's go to Philippians chapter 4, and let's see how God thinks about our needs. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19, the Apostle Paul says, But my God shall supply all your need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Notice it says, he shall supply all your need. Now, if, it's, if it says he shall supply, why would you spend all your time trying to convince him you have a need? And why would you convince or, or spend all your time trying to convince him that uh, uh, it, you need it desperately? No, the Bible says that God shall supply all your need. That's very positive. It didn't say he might. It didn't say there's a strong possibility he will. It didn't say if you're good or if you're bad. It says, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So I make that part of my prayer life. When I pray over my needs, particularly financial needs, I put in that prayer, according to the Bible here, Philippians 4.19. I say, Father, your word says in Philippians 4.19, that you will supply all my need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I make your word part of my prayer life, and I believe that it is your will to supply all my needs. So I believe I receive according to Mark 11:23 23 and 24, and now I am going to praise you in advance because I believe you're working behind the scenes right now to fulfill every need that I have. I am positive and I am confident that you will do what you said you would do because you are the faithful God. Now notice how I prayed. And notice that wasn't hoping and praying. 
that wasn't, you know, I, I sure hope God heard me. I know that He heard me. How do I know that He heard me? Because I prayed according to His will. I found it in the Word. I prayed according to His will. And remember, 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15 says, And if we know that He hears us, and we know that we've prayed according to His will, then we also know that we have the petitions that we have desired of Him. Amen? So that's how you pray for your financial needs. Base your prayer on the Word of God. Now, let me go to Job chapter 36. Once again, we're finding out what God's Word says about our financial needs, and we're allowing God's Word to be His part of our prayer life. So Job chapter 36, and let's look at verse 11. If they obey and serve Him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. Now notice there is a prerequisite, or you might say a condition. If they obey and serve Him, if you're obedient to what God is telling you to do, if you're obedient to His Word, and you have a heart to serve Him, then God promises that you will spend your days in prosperity and your years in pleasures. So once again, I make that His part of my prayer life. I say, Father, I have been obedient. I have been willing to serve You. And You have promised in Your Word that if I'm willing and if I am obedient, then I can expect You to cause me to spend my days in prosperity and my years in pleasures. So I make that word my part or your part of my prayer life. I pray according to your word. I know that I have prayed according to your will. And since I know I've prayed according to your will, then I also know I have the petitions I've desired of you. So notice once again, I'm not just praying off the top of my head. I'm not just praying according to uh, a religious prayer I heard when I was growing up. No, I'm praying according to the Word of God. Why? Because the Word of God is the will of God. Settle that once and for all. The Word of God is the will of God. And here we are seeing very clearly that it is God's will to supply our financial needs. So if you have a financial need in your life today, let me encourage you to take these two scriptures. Now, on our next broadcast, we're going to cover some more scriptures regarding financial prosperity. But take these two verses that I've shared with you today, Philippians 4.19 and Job 36.11, and make them God's part of your prayer life. Inject them into your prayer. And I want you to know that if you will do that, then God promises He will hear you. Not only will He hear you, but He will grant you the petitions you've desired of Him. So, don't worry about your financial needs. Don't, don't have, to have uh, a care about them. You just pray according to the Word of God, and then you can rest in the assurance that God heard you, and He will supply your every need. Amen? Praise God. I pray in Jesus' name that the Word that you've just heard on this special lesson today has inspired your faith and has helped you to see that God is interested in meeting every need in your life. So just rejoice in Him, thank God in advance, and expect a miracle. Amen? I'll see you next time.